Okay, for this one I want to tell you about Atwood's machine problems. Uh, first let me tell you what they are. An Atwood's machine problem is when you have a pulley and there's two masses and um, say this mass is heavier than this one this will go down if they're attached to a string. A string attaches them to each other and it's looped over a, a pulley and the pulley might be fastened to the ceiling. So when this one goes down, this one goes up. A guy by the name of Atwood uh, used this type of machine to study acceleration of objects. That's why they're called Atwood's machines. Um, with this one, this is a, a similar system, except for now this is on a table. Um, might be a frictionless table or maybe um, a, a table that has friction. But then a string goes over a pulley and um, is attached to this M2. So when M2 descends, M1 goes across the table. You probably did a couple labs on these things last year. Okay, um, for, this, for this unit, for unit C, we're going to assume that the string has no mass. No mass, it's, or in other words, it's a light string, so it, it's not going to affect the masses um, of the system. We're also going to assume that the pulley has very little mass. We say the, po the, the mass of the pulley is negligible. We'll also assume that there's no friction in the pulley's axle. Those are all assumptions that make the system much more simple to study at first. We can add in the complications later. All right, let's get started. For the Atwood's machine that is in this position if this is M1 and this is M2 and if M uh, you can assume that there's if this is attached to the ceiling I'm not always going to draw the ceiling when I do these but it's attached to a ceiling um, let's say that M2 is heavier then it's greater than M1. So it's going to accelerate this way. And let's say we want to know two things. We would like to know the acceleration of M2, and we would like to know the tension in this string. Okay, well, um, the magnitude of the acceleration of M2 is the same for this one and this one. They both have the same ex magnitude of acceleration, even though this one goes up and this one comes down. That's because they're attached to a string. They're attached by a string. So if this is going 2 meters per second squared down, that's got to be going 2 meters per second squared up. Um, what we are going to do is um, we are going to put some forces in here. This is M2G down this way. And I didn't leave myself much space here, but it's um, I'm going to draw this. I'm going to make this. This is a big force. And this is a, a, a smaller force. This is going to be M1G down. So M2G down on this side and M1G on that side. What we'll do is we'll straighten these out. I know they're pulling in two different direct. They're, they're pulling. Both, they're both pulling down. But isn't that kind of like this? Isn't it like a system, if we straighten this out, of... Um, M2G pulling this way and um, M1G pulling that way. And isn't this the same thing that is just one big system of M1 plus M2 being pulled um, with these two forces? So the acceleration of this system is going to be M2G minus M1G all over M1 plus M2. Okay, let's put some numbers in so I can show you what I'm talking about. Pulley. 2 kilograms. 3 kilograms.
Okay, what will be the acceleration of the system? Well, that's kind of like a two kilogram being pulled with 20 newtons. And a three kilogram being pulled with 30 newtons. And so the um, acceleration is equal to the net force. That would be 10 newtons, since they're pulling in opposite directions, divided by the mass, which is 5 kilograms. So that's 2 meters per second squared. Okay, now you might ask, well, how do you get the tension? How do you get the tension in the rope? Well, let me show you what you do. You tunnel vision on just one of these. If you just tunnel vision on just one of these, then um, let's look at what's happening there. I'll draw this down here so it's less confusing. We have uh, that three kilogram mass. We have 30 newtons down. And you know what's pulling up on it? Not this guy, it's the rope. The rope is pulling up with a tension FT. Guess which one's bigger, the 30 or the FT? I kind of gave you a hint. You know why it's bigger? The 30 is bigger? It's because it's accelerating down. The 30 must be bigger. Now I just apply Newton's second law. A equals F net over M. So A is 2 meters per second squared. I already know that. So I'm going to put in 2 meters per second squared. Yeah, I had to do that before I could do this. The net force, the 30 is winning. So I'm going to say 30 newtons minus FT all over the mass. Now, I'm, that's my system. The dotted one line is my system, so that's 3 kilograms. Solving for FT, let's see, that's 6 newtons, um, so that would have to be 24. FT is 24 newtons. See how that works? I could have used the 2 kilogram one. I would have gotten the same thing. Can I see if I can fit that over here? The 2 kilogram one has 20 newtons down on it. That's 20 newtons down. And FT is up on that one as well. But um, in this case, the FT is winning because it's, this one's accelerating up. So I would say 2 meters per second squared, that's the acceleration, is equal to the net force. That would be FT minus 20. The FT is winning for, that, for this guy all over 2 kilograms. 2 kilograms, because I'm looking at the 2. When I solve for that, lo and behold, I get 24 newtons. The tension in a string is the same throughout. Okay, I think I'm going to need a, a, a part 2 to show you the, the Atwood's machine for this type of a system. So I'll see you in a little bit.